So I know that I look like I'm a baby. Everyone always says I look like I'm a teenager, but the truth is guys, I am 29, almost 30. And as I discovered, when you reach this point in your life, you tend to reflect back on your 20s. And when I look back, I think, yep, I did some awesome stuff with my money. Of course, I also look back and think, hey, you know, I did a lot of stupid stuff too, and so did my friends. So hopefully I can help some of you not make the same mistakes that we did. And the first one is a real doozy, and that is not realizing that, well, credit cards aren't real money. Nope, they ain't real money, they are zombie money. Once you are 18, you are eligible to sign up for a credit card, and most people sign up for their first credit card in their late teens or early 20s, which is awesome because, as most subscribers will know, I absolutely love credit cards. I use credit cards a lot, and because of all of my travel miles I earn for free with them, I've been able to fly first class and business class around the world in my 20s. Credit cards are awesome, they are extremely helpful, but they are also a double-edged sword. Credit cards are only fantastic on the condition that you use them wisely, not stupidly. Sadly though, it's really easy to use them stupidly. Credit cards trap a lot of newbie card owners who don't understand that you need to be very mindful when using credit cards, because if you aren't, it's easy to overspend money. Why? Well, think about it. When you buy something with cash, that cash is gone immediately. You can feel that pain of the loss of your money that is now gone. But when you swipe your credit card, your bank balance, it remains the same. There is no immediate pain, which is why as numerous studies have shown, when most people use a credit card, they make the fatal mistake of spending more money than they would have with cash. Of course, my friends and I now know this because we've had experience with them. But unfortunately, when you're in your early 20s or early teens and you get your first card, you don't have that life experience yet. Here in New Zealand, on orientation day at uni or college, banks will set up booths and lure new students to come over and sign up for credit cards. And in my opinion, it's a little shady because they'll use all sorts of bonuses to lure naive students into signing up for them. When I was at uni, a bonus one year was that if you signed up for a credit card and used it to buy anything at McDonald's, you would get a small side of fries for free. And obviously to a bunch of broke teenagers at uni, or as you would say in America college, this was literally the best deal ever. And so surprise, surprise, their booth was inundated with students desperately wanting to sign up for this credit card. One of those being a good friend of mine. He got his $500 starter credit card and very quickly his life began to change. Now when his flat pantry got low, instead of looking for loose change in the couch and buying some noodles and tuna to tide him over to his next paycheck, he would instead take himself out to McDonald's and get a Big Mac with a side of free small fries. And then when he realized he had a hole in his pants, instead of going to the local thrift shop and getting a new pair, he'd head to his local mall and buy a new pair of jeans instead. And then when he asked a girl out on a date, instead of taking her on a walk through the park for free, he would take her on a date to McDonald's and buy her a McChicken with a side of free small fries instead. And of course, it was so easy to spend this money because, hey, he experienced none of the immediate pain he would have felt buying these things if he had used cash instead. But of course, he discovered that it was just delayed pain when he got his credit card bill and realized he now owed the bank $500 plus interest. So not being aware of this is indeed a money trap that you want to avoid in your 20s, but something else that's almost just as bad is becoming afraid of debt. A lot of people told me growing up that debt was bad, but those people were wrong. But because of the fact that they had more life experience, I sadly believed them for a while. Debt isn't bad, but it isn't good either. Instead, it's a double-edged sword. It can be used for bad things, and it can be used for good things. My multi-million dollar business would not be a multi-million dollar business without my credit cards. I spend a lot of money on them to pay for business expenses that manage my cash flow. And that phrase there, cash flow, is the real way to utilize credit cards and debt. It's Monday and you wake up and find that you've been sent a $50 phone bill. But because you get paid on Friday, you don't have the cash right now. So you take out your credit card to pay for it because you know that you're getting a $1,000 paycheck from work on Friday. Yes, that $50 that you're spending right now on your credit card is zombie money, but give it five days and it will be real money. Credit cards help you close that five day gap so that you don't get charged any late fees on your phone bill. They help you manage your future cash flow. 
But guys, the second mistake, if you make it, it's way worse. If you make this mistake, you're going to be broke forever. And that is money mistake number two, not hitting that like and subscribe button. But seriously, every time that you take a moment out of your very busy day to hit that like button, it really helps this channel. So thank you so much to everybody that does it. But no, the actual money mistake is this, not respecting compound interest. So yes, obviously it is a big mistake to not save a portion of your money in your 20s. But in my opinion, at this point, saying it is a massive cliche. I mean, let's be honest, tune into any YouTube millennial finance channel at this point and you'll hear the same thing. The power of compound interest. Compound interest. Compound interest. And actually, you'll also hear something else talked about a lot, and that is the glorification of being super frugal in your 20s. And if you guys want to know the secret about how I was able to become a multi-millionaire in my 20s, I pretty much spent my money as though I'm making a McDonald's salary. And yet somehow these millennial YouTube finance channels are also driving a Tesla in their 20s too. But no, no, I could, because seriously, I don't have a problem with driving a Tesla in your 20s. <laughs> Even though I personally don't care about cars, I'm sure for car buffs, they are for some reason really fun to drive. And you know what, guys? I think it's a massive mistake to not have fun in your 20s. I genuinely don't think that you need nor should spend your 20s living like you earn a McDonald's salary, unless you actually earn a McDonald's salary. Surely at this point, COVID-19 has taught us all an extremely important and valuable life lesson, and that is that nothing in life is guaranteed and you cannot predict the future. But you see, I didn't need COVID-19 to teach me this lesson because sadly for me, I had learned it earlier in my 20s. In fact, I learned it last year. I was in Calgary, Canada on a vacation, and it was the day before my flight home, and I was packing my bags and getting ready to go home to little old New Zealand, when suddenly my stomach started to feel funny and over the course of a few hours, it went from feeling funny to me being curled up on my bed in horrendous pain. On the pain scale, I was a clear eight. Well, I went from being curled up on my bed in my Airbnb to lying on a hospital gurney, getting prepared for surgery to have my inflamed appendix taken out. And while appendix operations usually end well, you never know what could happen. So anytime you do have an emergency life-saving operation in a foreign country, you start to wonder what would happen if it didn't end well. And as I did, do you think I lay there thinking, man, I really wished I had taken more advantage of compound interest. Or do you think that I instead lay there? Man, I'm really glad I took time to travel, have amazing memories and see the world with my family and friends. So obviously guys, it's a balance. Yes, you need to start saving a portion of your money in your 20s. Compound interest will thank you later. But don't take life for granted. Don't assume you'll have tomorrow. Enjoy today too. Balance your spending. Don't go to either extreme. And so that's why, for me, when I look at a Tesla and see that somebody buys it, I think, hey, if they could afford it, good for them. Because chances are, they're a car buff and that Tesla will, for some reason, bring joy into their life. But you know what will probably not bring much joy into your life? Influencers all sporting the latest Gucci stuff, the latest Louis Vuitton stuff. Unlike a Tesla, which makes a significant impact on how you do a major activity driving, this stuff doesn't really change much in your life at all. Now, yes, there are legitimate reasons for buying stuff, but if you think one of those reasons is happiness, I'd question that because as cliche as it is to say, the truth is stuff usually doesn't make people happy. And to see why, we just need to look at a study done in Vancouver. In what might be the best scientific study to be a part of ever, a group of participants were each given $40 for free and then asked to spend it on something, like a new t-shirt or a new pot plant. Then next week, the participants were each given $40 again, but this time they had to spend it instead on a service that would save them time, such as hiring a cleaner for two hours or a meal kit from Blue Apron. Blue Apron is a service that each week sends your meal kits featuring all the ingredients you need to prepare healthy and delicious meals right out of your home. There are eight recipes to choose from each week and you can choose from any combination that you like. To try Blue Apron for yourself, simply click on the link in the video description below and use my coupon code NOPE to get 9% off because seriously guys, I'm just kidding. This video is not sponsored by Blue Apron, but as you'll see soon, this video probably should be. So, back to our study. 
All the participants were called after each purchase and they were each asked to rate how happy they were. And the results were overwhelming. People felt much happier after spending their $40 to save time rather than to buy stuff. So basically what the study shows us is that buying a Blue Apron subscription, yeah, that'll probably make you happy. And why? Well, because it will free up the time that you would have spent planning meals, shopping for food and chopping up ingredients so that you can spend that time on experiences that you enjoy. Whereas just buying more stuff that you don't need does not save you time, nor does it provide you with an experience. You get an initial dopamine boost and that's it. For most people, the happiness and satisfaction they gain from buying stuff is fleeting. So you find yourself having to buy more and more stuff, seeking out satisfaction, but never achieving it. Although, as I said, it's when you buy more and more stuff that you don't need. If you actually need that stuff, then yes, it is going to make you significantly happier. So it is a good investment. So if you were previously sleeping on the floor, then buying a mattress to sleep on would substantially improve the quality of your day-to-day -day life and would thus substantially increase your happiness. But while I certainly fell for this mistake in my 20s and bought a bunch of stuff that I really didn't need, there was actually one purchase that I regret way more. And that was college, or as we say in New Zealand, uni or university. See, I don't know what it's like where you live, but here in New Zealand, if you have the teensiest little bit of intelligence, it is just assumed that after high school, you're gonna go off to university. But my goodness, I hope this attitude that everyone should just go to college or university will one day change. Because for me, university was a very expensive mistake to have made, but probably not for the reasons that you're thinking. You see, when I was a teenager, I actually had a pretty successful online store that resold video games and accessories. And of course, I graduated from high school and everyone always asks us high school graduates the same question. So now that you've left high school, what degree are you going to study? And at first I started replying to these questions with, huh, I don't know. I'm thinking of taking a gap year and uh, spending it on growing and scaling my business. I mean, that seems like a smart idea, doesn't it? It's making me a bunch of money. And every time I'd say this, people would laugh and they'd be like, ah, ha ha, that's so funny. <laughs> Taking a gap year. Ha ha, but seriously, what degree are you actually going to study when you definitely do go to university next year? So I gave into this enormous societal peer pressure and went and signed up for a college or university. A Bachelor of Humanities with a major in Religious Studies and as you can probably tell that is a major that has zero pathway to any sort of career at all but costs just as much as any other type of degree to get. So yes I went to university to get a degree that had zero pathway to a well paying job to pay off my university loans that I was racking up and despite this fact everyone applauded me. Good on you for going to university Sarah. Good on you for going into debt to study a degree that won't get you a job. I found it so baffling, and so in my feeble attempts to live up to society's expectations of me, I was trying to balance my store that was making me money, and my degree which was costing me money, and this one day led me to have a bright idea. You see, like usual, I had left my 2000 word history essay until the last minute. I had two days to write it and get it in. But I also had a stack of new video games that I wanted to list for sale in my online store. I couldn't do both, there was just simply not enough time. Hmm, I could choose to spend my time writing my history paper. If I do that, I'll make no money, but I will pass my class. But if I instead choose to list my games for sale, those games will make me money. And with that money, I can hire someone to write my history essay for me. And actually, I'll make so much money that I'll be able to outsource all of my history essays this year. Not only will I make more money, but I'll also pass my history class and regain a bunch of time that I would have spent writing essays and use that again to make even more money. Pleased with this plan, I went on to Google and started looking up essay writing services. And as I started contacting the one that looked the best, I had a sudden realization. Wait a minute. In the academic world, hiring someone to help you complete a task more efficiently and faster isn't considered smart or intelligent, it's considered cheating. And so would you believe that the very next day, I finally went and dropped out of college. College, or as we would say, university, obviously wasn't right for me, but unfortunately by the time that I had dropped out, I'd already accumulated a bunch of useless, unnecessary debt that didn't aid me one single bit. 
So don't make my mistake, actually sit down and ask yourself, is this degree gonna actually help me towards my long-term goals or am I doing it because society is pressuring me to? Because obviously some amazing careers do require a degree and that's okay. But please don't feel pressured to go. And you know, pretty much everyone told me when I did it that dropping out was going to be a really big mistake. Why not just finish it? You've already invested so much. Sarah, why aren't you just falling for the sunk cost fallacy? And at the time I thought, no, I'm not gonna fall for this just because I've already fallen for the trap of thinking that I have to go to university because everyone told me to, doesn't mean I'm also gonna therefore fall into the sunk cost fallacy trap too. There is a great saying, don't cling to a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it. Just because I'd wasted my most precious resource, my time at uni, didn't mean I had to keep wasting it. I dropped out and I never looked back, not once. So did this video help you? If it did, please subscribe and hit that little notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my videos. And if you'd like to learn how I built five income sources in my 20s that makes me over $1,000 a day passively, I'll have a link to that video here. So go ahead, watch my next video, and I'll see you over there.